Hello everybody and welcome back to Talk of the Town. Here I am with Eileen Marr, our movie reviewer. And uh, hey, it was a great show with Shannon, don't you think, and Marion? Yeah, very interesting. It's nice to see all the different people who used to be Girl Scouts. It's exciting that Marion was a Girl Scout. And, uh, yeah, it's fun to talk about Scouts. I love it. And I hope that more girls will join and more of their um, significant people in their lives will help to volunteer. And just like um, Shannon said, you don't have to give a whole bunch of time. Like, if you know how to knit, we'd love you to come and volunteer and just teach us how to knit at one meeting. Or if you know how to bake something special and you'd be willing to open up your home to a bunch of Girl Scouts and have us bake in your house for the day. If you just want to do a little thing. bit, we'll welcome you. We'll if you want to do it. a lot, fine. We'll take it. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> well, let's and, um, get to the movie. Okay. Uh, can I just admit, just talk? Oh, just go like, ahead. Um, go ahead. We, we did just have a great trip to Washington. I didn't get a chance to really elaborate on that very much with, uh, with uh, Shannon O'Brien, but... You know, I can tell you, I've never traveled with 20 girls before, but it was the most incredible experience. They were so well behaved. They were, they loved everything that we did. We went into the um, when we were done with our sing along, we went into the Museum of Nash, Museum of National, the National Museum of Natural History. And the great thing about Washington is, all those museums are free of charge. So I could take all my girls in, and we didn't have to pay a dime. The tax dollars just... working. Yeah, and I said, good. That's one thing that made me really, really happy about. <laughs> but Girl Scouting is just an incredible adventure for from the youngest to the oldest, and I, I hope that we do see a lot of girls around town join up. Excellent. All right. Excellent. Okay. Now, what, okay, we're talking about see. some movies um, here. We're going to talk we? about four movies that I was able to see oh. since our last show, and I'm going to again go from the G-rated to the PG-13. I didn't see any R-rated movies this time. Okay. Uh, actually, I have a G, a PG, and a couple of PG-13. So the first one is called Mr. Bean's Holiday. All right. So. Uh, if you're a fan of the BBC's Quirky Mr. Bean show, then you can't help but love Mr. Bean's Holiday. It's much better than Bean's last film, 1997's Bean. This film opens with Mr. Bean, played by seemingly rubber-faced, gumby-bodied Rowan Atkinson, winning a local Churchill's raffle a trip to the beaches of Cannes, France, at the same time as the Cannes Film Festival is taking place. Uh, do you know Mr. Bean? Do you watch Mr. Bean at all? Do you yes. Know? I, <laughs> do you well, like Mr. Bean? I don't oh, know. No. I don't know. I, I don't, oh, I'm not no. into the British humor that much. Oh, but. he's so funny. Anyway, along the way, Mr. Bean gets into his usual trouble, tripping over things, spilling things, and accidentally separating a young male passenger on his train from the young boy's father. Bean takes the young boy under his care, and the two embark on an adventure across France. At first, the boy is not so sure he really needs Bean's help, and rightfully so, for it was Bean who made the boy's father miss the train. The two do go on to like each other, and as they make their way to their destination, they get into some silly hijinks, and that is basically what this movie is. It's just a series of laugh-inducing pratfalls and sight gags, the funniest being Mr. Bean's street performance of modern dance and opera to garner enough money from tourists to continue on the way to Cannes after Mr. Bean misplaced his, his wallet. money and his passport. Typical Mr. Bean. Anyway, Mr. Bean even finds love in this movie and how very French that is, right? Of note in the supporting cast is Willem Dafoe, who I haven't really seen around very much lately. And he plays an American film director called, named Carson Clay, who's, um, who has a film debuting at the Cannes Film Festival. And this film that he's debuting, he wrote, produced, directed, and even stars in. And it is a hilarious commentary on the self-absorbed ego of some filmmakers. And Dafoe, who seems to be shopping and getting his hair cut at the same place as Dennis Leary of Red Rescue Me fame does, has never been better or funnier. Um, do you watch Rescue Me at all with Dennis Leary? I saw Leary? a few, now, issues, that's a few a not issues, a few uh, episodes. Yeah, that's a great show. And Dennis Which Leary, one is Dennis Leary? He's, he's actually a Boston boy. Uh, he's the tall, blonde, with the great hair. Oh, yeah. He's just always... He's on a lot. He, he, well, that's his show. Is it really? Yeah, it's, oh. he's, he's the, like... He's, He's the, the main, main character okay. in Rescue Me. I, I know what you're talking about. But Willem Dafoe looks, looks like his twin in this movie. Not that it's a bad look, it's a very nice look. And I was trying to think, when's the last time I really saw Willem Dafoe? And it was in a movie called The Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou. And that was directed by probably one of my all-time favorite directors, a man called Wes Anderson. And in that, again, Willem Dafoe, who in the past has been played very serious characters, um, has, has had very serious roles, he's just silly and goofy, and he wears this red pom-pom hat that just kind of bounces around the whole time. And then that got me thinking about Owen Wilson. And you heard about Owen Wilson. 
You're talking, about, to, you're oh, talking to Brian Kelly. Yeah, okay, well, it's in, the, it's in the news. That's why I thought maybe you heard about it. Hey, no, what happened to Owen well, Wilson? Do you know who Owen Wilson is? No. Well, I just, what did I review with him not too long ago? Um, Night at the Museum. Yeah. Well, he played the little cowboy. You saw Night at the Museum. Yeah, he, he plays a little cowboy. And Steve Coogan plays the little Russian, I mean, the... Um, Roman soldier, remember yeah, that? I remember, yeah. Well, Owen Wilson. Yeah, I remember the cowboy. Well, you know, Owen Wilson, yeah. very funny. He's been in a lot yeah. of really funny movies. What happened to him? Well, apparently, you know, um, tried to commit suicide over the weekend, so it just broke my heart. And I'm thinking, I hope, I hope. That's Owen's because okay. he got a bad movie review. No, not for me. <laughs> not for me. Well, anyway, I hope Owen's okay because he's just wonderful. But anyway, uh, Wes Anderson. Any of his movies are incredible. I'm kind of going off track here. Um, anyway, if you don't like Mr. Bean, you probably won't get this film. You won't like this film. But if you're one of the lucky ones who loves Mr. Bean, Mr. Bean, you can't go wrong spending a cool 90 minutes with him. So that's two thumbs up. Noelle and I saw it. Uh, we went to the opening show, 10.30 in the morning last Friday. Noelle loves Mr. Bean, has a lot of his discs. Uh, oh, yeah. Just, oh, man. Yeah. She's becoming she, like you. She's just, he's just this very, This family very is obsessed with funny. movies. <laughs> well, Noella, out of all my children, really does love, uh, movies. loves movies. Yeah. Mr. Bean's just a funny, funny guy. <laughs> and, you know, it's just good, silly fun. Again, there's no big message here. There's, you know, it's You don't have fun. to think much. You don't have to think at all. You just go in and enjoy it. And beautiful countryside, you go all through France. Um, so okay. that's kind of fun. Okay. Yeah, but they didn't film it in France. No, that one they, <laughs> they did. They came to Boston. <laughs> I know. That's what you were just saying, huh? They're going to be filming the next Pink Steve Panther. Steve Martin's Pink Panther, they're going to film a lot of it in Boston. But it's set in France. But it's set in France, yes. Excuse me. I guess they'll bring some Citroen cars over or something. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be interesting. Oh, the little car. Was that the little one? Yeah, the, um, the little car that Mr. Bean drives. I don't know what it's called. Oh, he a drives mini? one of them too? Yeah, teeny tiny. It's like no, this big. The it's one, smaller than they the have them in Canada. The Coopers? The Mini Coopers? No, it's sold by Mercedes Benz up in Canada. Oh, the two seater thing? Yeah. The three wheels? The one in the front? No, the two? no? it's four wheels, but oh. he had it. Steve Martin had, it was parking oh, with one of them. Oh, yeah. They sell them really in like Canada, they don't movie. sell them in the States yet. They're coming next year. Are they, are they, they electric or are no, they? No, they're um, diesel or, or gas. Oh, okay. But they're small. Yeah. Okay, so that'll be interesting to see. We'll have to find out when that is. Maybe we can make a. Maybe we could do our next show. Here we go in town. Martin. <laughs> Folks, what do you think, huh? <laughs> okay, on to um, a PG rated film. Actually, um, Mr. Bean was rated G. Two thumbs up. Next movie I'm going to review is called Hairspray. It's rated PG. And it's based on the Broadway musical of the 1988 John Waters film. So it's a film based on a musical of a film, which is kind of an. Unique. I'm trying to think. Is okay. there any other movies that they've done that with? Hairspray was directed by 42-year-old L.A. native Adam Shankman, who also directed The Pacifier and Cheaper by the Dozen 2. And you can see that this director, Shankman, he, he really likes young people. The film is just a blast of song and dance that highlights all that is positive about youth, about being open-minded, and being young at heart. This director really um, seems to understand y young people. The story takes place in 1960s Baltimore, um, which is John Waters' hometown. Now, do you know John Waters at all? He's a very quirky filmmaker. I really filmmaker. wish you wouldn't ask all these right, questions in front of the viewers at home, because you, really, <laughs> you really bring out my ignorance. He's a real quirky, quirky guy, and has made some interesting films. Serial Mom with Kathleen Turner. Where she's a murdering mom, suburban housewife. Um, was Cry Lizzie Baby. Borden a murdering mom yeah, too? Yeah, a little different than that. <laughs> Cry Baby with Johnny Depp, um, polyester with Divine, and Divine um, played the um, role that John Travolta plays in this film. Okay, the story takes place in 1960s Baltimore amid the first waves of outrage and protest against racial segregation. On the Corny Collins show, which is an American bandstand-like dance show, the white and black teens are not allowed to dance together. In fact, the black teens have to come only on Tuesdays and have their own show hosted by the regal, stately Motormouth Mabel, and she's played by the regal and stately Queen Latifah. And I'm glad to see Queen Latifah. Um, what did I review not too long ago? And I said she didn't really have much of a role. The one with um, Will Ferrell that I loved. Wasn't she in Norbert? Norbert? Was she in Norbert? Norbert? Was she? I don't know. Don't no, no, she so. was. No, she was in that other, some other one. Um, anyway, we watched recently. It's, it's good to see her. I, I really like Queen Latifah. She has a great presence. She um, was in the one where she was sick. She thought she was going <gasps> to die. Oh, yeah. Last Holiday or something yeah, like that. Something like I that. didn't see that one. Yeah, it was, it was cute. Yeah. She's a beautiful woman and big woman, you know, and not afraid to... Um, she's a big, beautiful she's woman. She's a big, beautiful woman, and she'll <laughs> tell you that. I'm a big, beautiful woman, and I like that. A stellar cast led by John Travolta as Edna Turnblad makes the film even more enjoyable. Travolta, encased in what appears to be at least a 50-pound fat suit, can still trip the light fantastic. And Christopher Walken, trained professionally as a dancer in his younger days, 
as Edna's sweet, loving husband, Wilbur, can keep right up with Travolta in the dancing department. Now, boy, Walken is such a chameleon. Um, he can play the most dangerous, fear-inducing villain. And I'd have to say, one of the scariest roles that I've ever seen him in is in a movie called True Romance with Christian Slater, where he, um, wow, is he a scary villain in that. Um, yet, here he is. He's, he'll tell you he was trained as a dancer as a young boy. If you've ever seen him as a guest host on Saturday Night Live, you'll know he's very, very funny. Um, but he's lovable and endearing in this role, and I can't wait to see him in a new movie just opened with him called Balls of Fury, which I'm hoping to see this weekend about Balls ping pong. Balls of Fury? <laughs> Balls of Fury. Instead of Blades yeah, is of it? Glory? Yes, and it's supposed to be kind of similar. <laughs> Blades of Glory, by the way, is out on DVD now. It came out on Tuesday. Okay. I haven't seen Gave it that yet. Two thumbs up. My I mean, son's sorry. He thought it was funny. funny yeah. you know? Kids love it. The, the, you know, um, Brian gave me a gift certificate um, for coaching his daughter in softball this past spring. And luckily I had it because the girls were dying for Blades of Glory. And it came out on Tuesday. I took my card, went right down to Hollywood Video, and we've now got Blades of Glory. So anytime you want to borrow it, we've got it. Oh, you bought it. Oh, we had to have she Blades of Glory. Now, I don't buy a lot of movies, I'll tell oh, you. I'm oh, no. very yeah. particular. I don't. I'm very particular. But the kids love that. Um, so anyway, Edna and Wilbur's daughter, Tracy, played by newcomer Nikki Blonsky in the role that launched Ricky Lake's career in the movie. You remember Ricky Lake? How she had a little talk show? Yeah. She played this was character in the 88 movie. No, I think no. it was only Channel 5 or Channel 6 for a while. She is the catalyst for change. She and best friend Penny, played by the always sunny Amanda Bynes, help to lead a protest that eventually brings about changes to the dance show. It's a simple fable about the struggle for desegregation, but the story never makes light of the subject, even though it presents it in such a light-hearted and approachable manner. It's a wonderful example of what the right attitudes and the right tactics can accomplish. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer is Cruella DeVille evil as the producer of the Corny Collins show. She's, this, she's whiter than white. Her hair is white blonde. Her skin is white white. She looks like she's down to about 90 pounds. She's getting a little too skinny. Um, but she vows to keep it a whites only show. Her outfits are worth the price of admission. She shimmers in sequins and seduces in red silk. She's a blast to watch, and she really seems to relish the role. And again, the only complaint I have is that she's, she's just too thin. Um, she looks like a lollipop. So who is she kind of against? Is she against Queen Latifah? Yeah, she's against Queen Latifah. She okay. doesn't want anything to yeah. do with um, they're, they're opposite. desegregation. The yeah, opposite. she's okay. Exactly. Oh, gee. That's a... You make such Close. good points. For all of you at home that didn't know that, I hope I enlighten you. That was really good, Brian. That's a very good but point. That's why right? I'm here. She's whiter than white as opposed to Queen Latifah. You know, mm. see, she's blacker than black. Well, she's not that black. She's chocolate brown, I'd oh, say. My God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but anyway, um, her head appears too big for her body. And don't forget... Oh, Michelle's, Michelle's the Queen Latifah. <laughs> Actually, well, you know, it's the hair. That's why it's called hairspray. Because the hair, it's the time of the big, big bouffants and the big hairdos. So so not only is Michelle Pfeiffer this skinny little thing, she's got, you know, six feet of hair. And that just makes her head look I, I can, oh, oh, Just huge. start right there in the hair. What? Remember the Burt Reynolds movie with the longest yard, I think it was? Yeah. The, Do you remember the prison guard, the, 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 the mm, commander, the, uh, the, this is the, the secretary? the one. The secretary? Yes. And she had the hair poofed up? Yes, yes. Do you remember what he said to her? No, what? You ever found any spiders in there? Oh, gross. <laughs> I know, I got that line. Well, there you go. Um, so anyway, great film for the whole family. It's rated PG. It has a, a nice you bring message. It right back. But, <laughs> but does it in a real nice and, as I said, approachable way. Everybody will okay. enjoy it. I brought all the kids. Um, I didn't bring TJ. I brought all the girls. All the girls really enjoyed it. I don't see that boys wouldn't, wouldn't like it. Um, right. it, was, it was a lot of fun. It's great. Excellent. And you know, when you think of how far it's come, the I saw the original movie, you know, of course, 20, almost 20 years ago. I enjoyed that. Um, Divine is I divine. Wasn't, I was in that. too young to see Oh, yeah, the you were just a baby. 20 years um, ago. But you know, a lot of times I don't like remakes, but this, because it's not strictly a remake, it's not a remake of the movie. It's the movie that became the play that's now the play of the movie. The play of the, the movie of the play. Uh, I, I, I'm confused. <laughs> oh, 